Well, the Kelly family have endured the unimaginable, but they've challenged their despair into saving young lives. In 2012, while on a night out in Sydney's King's Cross, 18-year-old Thomas Kelly lost his life as a result of a coward punch. Since then, his parents, Kathy and Ralph, have put aside their own grief to ensure other families don't suffer the same. Sadly, their strength and resolve was met with tragedy again four years later when their other son, Stuart, took his own life. Thomas and Stuart's legacies live on as their family continues to promote keeping safe and staying kind in communities. Their mother, Kathy Kelly, is with us now. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You lost two boys, both at 18. Um, how for you, and I guess and Ralph, your husband, how have you guys stayed so strong? It hasn't been easy. Every day is a struggle, but, um, you know, we before we lost Stuart, we did it for our other children. We had our daughter Madeline, who's in the middle of the two boys, and Stuart, and you just can't give up. You know, you really can't. You have to keep going for them and to provide a safe and um, try and make a safe world for them and make their lives as, as fulfilling as they possibly can, uh, as you can. So, um, yeah, we've, we've done it for the kids, and I think since we've lost Stuart, you know, um, Madeline has been incredibly strong, but. You know, we worry about her every day and, and we do it for her, you mm. know, that she's, she's the reason we're here. Cathy, how have you and Ralph been able to push past your own grief to then reach out and go and help all of these families that you're helping right now? Look, I think it gives you purpose, it gives you something to strive for and interesting enough, you know, we've met a lot of people who've been through tragic circumstances. And unfortunately, it's quite sad to think that it's those people that have to try and make change and create a difference in society. But, um, you know, if we have uh, stronger governments or governments and stay in place for a, a long enough yeah. period of time, then maybe that could change. But um, I think you'll always see people like us that have, have been through various tragedies in their lives that it just it gives you something to get up and fight for every day. And it has been the last five years has truly been a fight every step of the way and um, you know it's good when you have a little bit of a win sometimes along the way. Yeah, sure. What kind of stories have you heard from these other families who you guys have helped? Oh look we um, particularly with our safe space we um, we have people that write in that you know were so heavily intoxicated they might end up in hospital or we might have actually saved their lives and I think you know, it's quite rewarding when they come back and they send a little email into St John's who are our provider and say something like, you know, I can't thank you enough. And, and we've had people that we have saved in that program that actually come out and volunteer now. So that's very rewarding as well. Absolutely. What, what do you say to, I guess, other parents or grandparents who are, are carers about, you know, what they can do to help curb this, you know, antisocial behaviour or try and keep their own children safe? What's your advice to them? Look, I think everybody needs to understand the consequences and the outcomes of, of how you behave when you go out, particularly if you are drinking and you may drink too much. And I think as parents or role models to our children, we have to be the greatest role models we can be. We need to sit down and try and put the devices away. We know we certainly didn't feel like we were doing it. We felt like we didn't listen to Stuart. Um, we tried, but you know, I think we need to go back to basics. We need to at least sit down, even if our kids are, you know, their late teens or even into their 20s and living at home. We really need to sit down as a family, even if it's once or twice a week, put all that aside and actually communicate with each other. So I think as parents and mentors, we need to teach our kids that they have to be respectful. They have to think about the consequences of what might happen if they do behave badly. And I think it's also about our new program, which is staying kind because you know, all the bullying in the world, it's so unnecessary, it's so hurtful, yeah. and we just need to think about how we want to be treated and be respectful. Staying kind is the <laughs> legacy that you guys have created. It's the initials for Stuart, your son. Yeah. Did you guys see a change in him? Yes, look, um, Stuart didn't ever seem to have a day of depression in his life. Um, obviously, you know, there was underlying pain that you couldn't see or he wouldn't speak about. He was only 14 when Thomas was killed. Um, but he had an extraordinary time at the King's School. He had a great year 12 and about seven months later he took his life. Now he went off to university at Sydney University and to a college and um, he had less than 24 hours in that place and we know in our own hearts that something catastrophic happened to Stuart there that night because it changed it changed him. That was when we saw him retreat to his room and and stay away, you know, like 
push all his friends aside and it took a long time to get him back out, helped him get a job. We were talking about him travelling overseas to study over there. Um, and I think probably the final straw for Stuart was a couple of weeks before he took his life, he was asking about that possibility to go away again because he didn't feel that he was ever going to be accepted amongst his peers in, in Sydney or in, in Australia. So um, I think that's the problem with our young people. They can't see that tomorrow could be better. So the, um, the case is still under investigation with the New South Wales coroner and we're advocating for an inquest so we can find out what happened to our son. Mm -hmm. Staying kind, as we said, is so important. How, I know if you guys saw about empathy and compassion, but listening, how important is that? I think listening is, is extraordinarily important. Um, recently, Ralph was quite sick, he had pneumonia and um, he was at the doctor and this doctor said to him at the time, you know, I have thousands of parents, bring their kids in here and I asked the kids a question and the parent always answers on their behalf. And I did a presentation yesterday and I know that's exactly what I did. I thought, I'm the parent, I have to answer the question, be quiet child, and I would answer for them. He said that's really important, we don't let our kids speak. And he also said that they don't like to speak up with their parents about their problems because they don't want to add stress to their lives, which is already very stressful. So I think if we really start listening to our children, um, then, and you know, having those times where we can actually be together, um, then we will see a difference and we will see lives saved and you know simply one life is too many. Yeah for sure. Kathy Kelly thank you so much for spending some time with us this My afternoon. Pleasure. We understand these safe spaces are just happening in Sydney at the moment but we would love to see them go out throughout the whole nation. Absolutely. Yeah. We're fantastic. Nice one. Thank you Kathy. Thank you very much.